Hey everyone, we are back here once again over the internet um, because of weather, which living in this part of the country, the northeast part of the country, uh, we have issues with weather from time to time and with our church and its location being on a hill, going up the hill and coming down the hill when it's icy, uh, especially that hill around Cole Point can be pretty dangerous. So. Uh, we decided to uh, not have in-person church today, to do it over the internet, uh, just to keep everyone safe. Um, so we can once again just give thanks that we have this technology, that we can get together over the internet, still have fellowship. Uh, we are, even though we're apart, we're still connected through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, and we can come together for a few moments and, and just be together and get in God's word and just have this time of fellowship and and worship. And, and hopefully that we will, in this time, we'll just get a deeper understanding of God, God's will for our life. And hopefully he will open our eyes to clearly see what he has in store for us, what is planned for us, what his will is and his purpose his purpose is for us individually and corporately as the body of Christ. So today, uh, the message what I'm going to talk about, this is more of a conversation right now than, than a message. Uh, the message that I had intended for today, I'm going to say for when we are in church together. Um, that's something I just feel like I, I want to do when we're in person. Um, and we what I want to talk about today is just something that my wife Jamie and I were talking about earlier today. It's uh, discussions that we've been having here lately, discussions uh, I've been having with with other people, and it's just something that just continues to come up. It's something that's kind of plaguing our society, and we just need to uh, hopefully just be more aware of what's going on, the things that are working behind the scenes. Uh, the devil is constantly at work, and he's definitely working overtime, triple shifts behind the scenes to continue to lead us in a path of destruction. And there are so many of us who are just so willing, it seems, to walk that path and head down the road of destruction. So uh, I'd like to get in it, get into it today, just for a little bit, just briefly. I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but it's just something that uh, I've been seeing a lot of here lately, and especially since this pandemic has hit, it seems to, I'm going to say this pandemic has just seemed to accelerate a, a lot of, a lot of things um, in a negative way. It's, it's accelerated things, um, and it's just, we were, as a society, it seems as if we were spiraling out of control we were getting further and further away from god and then this thing hit the COVID 19 pandemic hit and it just seemed to just accelerate it um, in the direction that is keeping us further from god pushing us away from god and further down that pathway of destruction and the devil just seems to have his foot on the gas and will not let up so we need to be wise. Uh, we need to uh, we need to be strong. We need to be courageous. We need to be walking in the Holy Spirit. Uh, but once again, I'm going to say we definitely need to be wise and prayerful and know what we're getting into, know what's coming our way, and then know have the tools to be able to to handle whatever situation or circumstance that we are we are pushed into. So today I want to talk about, uh, like I said, something that I've had many conversations over and it, it just seems like something that is plaguing our society. And it is, I want to talk about work. I'm hearing a lot, not from you guys, because you, know, you guys are good. Um, you, know, you guys are great. It's other people, not you guys. So I'm hearing a lot of talk about people. 
talk from people who uh, they don't want to work. They want to be taken care of. They want things handed to them. And that's, that's not, that's not even realistic. Uh, I mean, let's just be honest. We all know when you become an adult, one of the things that you have to do is go to work. You, you like to eat. You like to live indoors. You like to have clothes. You, you got to go to work. You want things. You have to go to work. And that has been the foundation of our society for thousands of years. You go to work, you provide, you, uh, you have, and you can take care of things because you are going out there and putting in the work. But we have gotten to a point where now people want to sit back and they just want someone to, to take care of them, whether it's another person, whether it's the government, uh, whoever. It, it just seems that our society has slipped away from that, that foundation, that cornerstone of going to work and providing for yourself, providing for your family. And I have never seen in my, you know, very young 51 years, I've never seen in this time where it has been okay to not work, to not put in the work, to not take care of yourself. I've never seen uh, so much where people want someone to take care of them. And it just, it, it just blows me away. And it's really been bothering me a lot. So today I wanted to look through <clears throat> We'll go through some uh, passages of scripture together and we'll see what the word of God has to say about about being lazy, about not working and some of the punishment that comes along with being lazy and, and not going to work and not taking care of you and yours. So if you want to open your Bible. And like I've said before, when we when we go from verse to verse, pause it, find the verse of scripture, hit play again, and we will pick right back up together. So if you want to take a look at, we're going to start, we're going to read through quite a few verses here. We're going to look at first is Proverbs chapter six, verses six through eleven, and they read: Go to the ant, O sluggard; observe her ways and be wise, which having no chief, officer, or ruler prepares her food in the summer and gathers her provisions in the harvest. How long will you lie down, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Your poverty will come in like a vagabond and your need like an armed man. So here, this passage of scripture in Proverbs is saying, look at, look at the ant. Look at how the ant works. No one has to tell the ant to go to work. The ant knows I need to go to work. I need to provide. I need to gather and, and store away, have my provisions in order to eat. You're a grown person. No one should tell you to go to work. No one should have to tell you these things. This is something you should know. Go to work and provide for yourself. The ant did not sit back and wait for someone to bring the provisions to her. The ant went out and got it. We are to do the same thing. We are to go out and get it now. Let me say this. I'm not speaking of someone who has lost their job. I've, I've had, I've lost my job before. Um, there are different, there are different situations where you become unemployed for a, for a particular reason, a, a layoff or or you were terminated for whatever reason, or, or, or whatever. There's a difference. You lost your job, but you're out there, you're out there looking, you're searching. Maybe you're not even having any luck um, in finding a job right away. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the person who just doesn't want to work and is looking for a handout for everything. So I just want to make that clear. Um, if you're in that situation where you're unemployed for uh, one of those reasons, this is not about you. This is about the person who does not want to work at all. Okay. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 13, verse four. Proverbs 13, verse four. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the soul of the diligent is made fat. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing. We're talking about people who want and want and want. They crave, 
but they get nothing. If you want it, once again, you have to go and get it. You have to put in the work and go and get it. And we are in a society and we are raising a generation. There's a generation that is coming up. And unfortunately, there's some people in my generation who just think I'm going to get it. I don't have to do anything. I, there are things that I want and someone to give them to me. And it, it just doesn't work that way. You have to go and get it. You want it. You got to work, put in the work and go and get it. No one should be. You should not be looking for someone to take care of or give it to you. Proverbs 19 verse 24. Proverbs 19, 24. The slugger buries his hand in his dish, but will not even bring it back to his mouth. It just speaks of laziness. You'll bury your hand in the dish, but won't bring it to your mouth. Here you're a full grown adult person, uh, healthy, strong, able, won't go out to work. You have the tools. The sluggard had the tools. They had the dish. They had the hand to feed themselves, but they just laid the hand in the dish and were too lazy to bring it to their mouth. That is a person who has everything that's right there in front of them, but what, you want someone to feed you? This person wanted them to, like, obviously wanted someone to feed them. But you're going to starve. If I wait for someone to feed me, I'm, I'm going to starve. Uh, if you're waiting for someone to feed you, more than unless you're a baby, you're going to starve. So grown people go out once again, and they get it, and they do for themselves, and they put in the work, and they're able to take care of themselves. Proverbs 20, verse 4. The slugger does not plow after the autumn, so he begs during the harvest and has nothing. You don't put in the work. You don't get. Here's the theme here. You don't put in the work. You don't go out and get it. You don't have it. Proverbs 26, 14. Proverbs 26, 14 reads, as the door turns on its hinges, so does the slugger on his bed. You don't get up. You sit and toss and turn in the bed. You think it's going to, someone's going to bring it to you. Someone's going to help take care of y your debt, uh, pay your bills, put food in your refrigerator, in your cabinet, put clothes on your back, provide a, a roof over your head, and you're just going to lay in bed and toss and turn and not get up. You got to get up. You have to get it. I don't know where this mentality has come from, but it's surely as we go through these pages of scripture and, and we're just in one book, the book of Proverbs. It is not biblical for you to sit around and to not work. Once again, not talking about you guys. I'm talking about the mother folks out there. You guys are great. It's, it's the other ones I'm talking about, not you. Let's go back to Proverbs 22, 13. Proverbs 22, 13 reads, The slugger says, There is a lion outside. I will be killed in the streets. So you're just looking for any excuse not to work. <laughs> There's a lion outside. I will be killed in the streets. I hear people with excuses about why they can't work. They come up with more excuses to not work than they than they can just go out and work. So they put in the work to not work instead of putting in the work at work. <laughs> you wind up working harder to stay home and to be lazy and to not go out and earn for yourself than you do if you would just go to work and put in the hours and make the money to provide for yourself. So you'll hear all kinds of ridiculous excuses of why someone can't go to work. It's just as ridiculous as there's a line in the street. I can't go outside. I'll be killed. Uh, then you're going to sit inside and then you're going to die because you won't go out to do what's necessary to take care of yourself. Proverbs 21, 25. And it reads, the desire of the sluggard puts him to death for his hands refuse to work. Once again, you come up with this lame excuse. I can't go outside because a lion's out there. I can't go to work for whatever whatever reasons that you have you have thrown out there. The desire of the slugger puts him to death for his hands refuse to work. You refuse to work, you don't eat, you starve. Now let's look at 
First Timothy chapter five verse eight. First Timothy five eight. First Timothy 5, 8 reads, But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Let me read that again. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So those who won't go out and provide for themselves and especially for their house is worse than an unbeliever being lazy not going to work and once again let me just make this point clear if you've lost your job or or you were injured and you can't work or you're in a situation like i said where you're unemployed temporarily and you you're having you're not having any luck finding a job that's totally different than the person who refuses to work there is a big difference I'm talking about that person who refuses to work. And if you refuse to work and provide for your household, you are worse than an unbeliever. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2. 2 I'm sorry, um, 2 Thessalonians 3.10. And it reads, For even when we were with you, we used to give you this order. If anyone is not willing to work, then he is not to eat either. The Bible makes a very clear point. You are to go to work. If you don't work, you don't eat. You can't eat. You can't provide. You are worse than an unbeliever if you refuse to go and take care of yourself we have somehow in our society almost make it glamorous to not work and people are so willing to sit back and look for someone to take care of them whether it's another person whether it's the government system it seems as if they are just so willing to sit back and hope that they will wipe out their debt uh, that they will take from others and give to them. There's this whole thing about equity. So we're going to take from others and give to some. And uh, we're, everyone's going to be on the same uh, playing field. And I know life isn't fair, but that most definitely is not fair. If you're going to work, do you want someone to take from you to give to another who refuses to go to work? Now, we know that there are people who go out there and they work hard and they may work multiple jobs and they barely make ends meet. And people like that definitely do deserve help. But if someone refuses to get up, get out of bed and go to work, they won't leave their house to go to work because they've made up a laundry list of excuses of why they can't do it. Whatever the excuse may be, they don't deserve the help. They don't deserve it. The Bible says, get up and go get it. The Bible does not speak favorably about people who are lazy. It, it sluggards, they call. Uh, not a word that I want to be called a sluggard. When you look through the pages of the Bible, people worked. If they didn't, they starved. If they didn't, they didn't have a place, a roof over their head. This is working hard goes all throughout the Bible. And as long as I've been alive, I was taught you go to work. You get there on time. You, you be responsible. You be uh, dependable, reliable. You hold yourself accountable and you're going to be successful. And success doesn't mean that you have a bunch of things, that you have a lot of money. But you know what? You're successful in the eyes of God because you did what he commanded to do. Go to work. If it wasn't important, it would not be in the Bible so many times. So we need to take this message, take it out into the world. 
And so that when people want to say that, uh, I want someone to take away my debt, uh, did you incur the debt? If you incur the debt, then you have to pay the debt. I, I want someone to provide a home for me. I want someone to give me to give me money for for nothing. Uh, yeah, that's not how it works. We got to get into the real world. The real world says you're grown. You go to work. That's the real world. I don't I don't know why anyone would think that's a hard fact or something that you can't comprehend. You're an adult. You go to work. You take care of yourself. You shouldn't want to sit back and have someone take care of you. You should want to provide for yourself and to have your own. We need to take this message out into the world because I'm just seeing a lot of things that are that are happening in the world that are just going against um, our foundations, the things that our society was built upon. And it is just causing the destruction of our society and the things that we know uh, and the only way to stay on track once again i will say this time and time again the only way to stay on track is to stay in god's word to stay in prayer to ask him for wisdom to ask him to open your eyes to see clearly what is going on the plans that are happening in the background the work of the devil that is going on in the invisible and in those in those spiritual in a spiritual realm to be able to see that, to hear the things that aren't being said, to see the things that can't be seen, and to understand that. But the only way to do it is to be filled with God's Spirit, to be in His Word, and have His Word in you, and to be constantly in prayer. We need to be in prayer constantly, speaking to Him, talking to Him, asking to Him to give us the wisdom that we need to see our way clear in a world that is just heading into darkness. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together again. Uh, we can't be in person, but we thank you for this technology that we can be together and be connected through the Spirit, through the Internet. So, Father, we'd ask that you would just take this word, this word that we, that we shared here today, and that you would just graft it into our hearts and our minds and our souls and as we go into this world we share this word this word work there's nothing wrong with that four letter word work so we would ask you lord god to just bless us this day to keep us strong keep us safe and father god continue to fill us with your spirit we ask this in jesus name amen god bless you